And now for part B, it says, hence or otherwise, state the range of the function g. Now, in order to state the range of a function, it's the best way to try to do that is to try to picture what they look like. So you have a quadratic functions, you can see they turn upwards or downwards, you can see the range of ranges, what values they can take on the y axis. So for this question here, we want to find the range of this function. And we know already from the, this that x has to be greater than 2 with this function. That was one of the conditions for t to be positive, x had to be greater than 2. So that's like one of the uh, conditions of this function. Now, the thing that we have to take into account here is this is not so easy to sketch the way it looks like at the moment. If we want to sketch a function like this, um, this is kind of related to the reciprocal function. Okay, so if I can put it as some sort of transformation of something over x, okay, then I will be able to, um, you know, a constant over x, some transformation of that, then I will be able to see what it looks like. I'll be able to try to sketch it. And I can see this is called an improper fraction because the numerator and the denominator are of the same order. They're of the same order. It doesn't matter about the numbers here. It matters about the powers. If the powers are the same or the power of the numerator is more than that of the denominator, then it's called an improper fraction. So this can be expressed with a whole number part, which will be a constant, and a fraction part. Now there's two ways I can rewrite this. I can rewrite this in the format of basically a over x, um, a over 3x minus 5 plus b. I can do it in a, in a number of ways. Okay, I can do it by using some sort of a identity. Okay, that's one way. So I could say that x minus 4 over 3x minus 5 can be written as a whole number part plus x minus 4 plus, sorry, something over plus some constant because it's going to be a constant over 3x minus 5. I can rewrite it like this and I can say this is identical to that and I can use some sort of identities. I could say, okay, uh, let me multiply both sides by x, 3x minus 5. So I have x minus 4 equals a times 3x minus 5 plus b. And then I can say, okay, let me compare, for example, the x terms. On this side, I have 1x. On this side, I have 3axes. So I can say that means a is equal to 1 third. And I want to find b. I can compare, for example, the constants. On this side, I have minus 4. On that side, I have minus 5a plus b. I already know a is a third. So I have minus 4 equals minus 5 over 3 plus b. So then I can say b is equal to minus 4 plus 5 over 3 so b is going to be minus 4 which is minus 12 over 3 plus 7 plus 5 over 3 is minus 7 over 3 so now I can say that my a is 1 third and my b is minus 7 over 3 so I can rewrite this as 1 over 3 minus 7 over 3 times 3x minus 5 Okay, so I can rewrite it in this form. Now, I can sketch something like this. This is something in this form I can sketch because I know that my, I have my, my horizontal asymptote will be this number here, so it'll be a third. And I know that the vertical asymptote will be the number that can't go in this denominator, which is going to be um, x equals um, 5 over 3. Okay, so that will be the horizontal asymptote, the vertical asymptote, sorry. So therefore, I can draw this graph. I can draw it. So it's, it's basically of the form of you know something over x plus something is this kind of form so I can draw that okay I know how to draw that okay so that that's something now I can draw when I can draw the function I can then uh, write write down the range of the function okay so let's just go ahead and I'll show you a few other ways of changing this into this improper into this proper fraction form um, just another way of doing it would be to do um, long division so you could do uh, 3x minus 5 into x minus 4. Now this is a bit of a strange one. Okay, this one is going to be a bit of a strange one. Um, but uh, it still works because we're not used to doing this. So 3x uh, times something gives me x. Well, that's 1 third. Yes, 1 third. And so 1 third times 3x is x. 1 third times minus 5 is minus 5 over 3. Then I have to subtract these two. So I've got 0 and I have minus 4 plus 5 over 3, which is minus 12 over 3 plus 5 over 3, which is minus 7 over 3. So we can see that 
you when you divide 3x minus 5 x minus 4 by 3x minus 5 you get the whole number which is one third and then you got plus minus 7 over 3 times the original denominator so you get the same thing as we got there basically we also have a third way of rewriting it so that you have in this form and that's why what's called rewriting the numerator so you have x minus 4 over 3x minus 5 equals now what I do is I leave the denominator as it is and I rewrite the numerator as the denominator okay so I copy the denominator into the numerator then I say how do I adjust this so it becomes like that and I want to adjust it in such a way that I've got something multiplied by this and just a number added to it I don't want to use x's or anything else so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say okay I need to multiply this by one third to make it x I have to make this become that so if I multiply this by one third that will leave me with x which I want but then I'll have minus 5 over 3 and I want it to become minus 4 I want there to be a minus 4 so I have to add something to this minus 5 over 3 that's going to give me minus 4 so I have to add let me call it p something to this to give me minus 4 so that p has to be minus 4 plus 5 over 3 which is minus 12 over 3 plus 5 over 3 which is minus 7 over 3 okay so you end up with your two separate fractions you can have here one third you can say 1 over 3 times 3x minus 5 over 3x minus 5 and you have minus 7 over 3 over 3x minus 5 which gives you minus 7 over 3 times um, that 3 times 3x minus 5 okay so these cancel out so you're left in the end with 1 third minus 7 over 3 times 3x minus 5 and you see that is the same as that we got here by doing division and that's the same as what we got here by doing um, identities so whichever way you do it you do it correctly you can change this into this form now why did I change it in this form because it's going to have it's going to be a transformation of this function which I know how to draw I know how to draw 1 over x it looks something like this it's a reciprocal function so all of this is is some sort of transformation of this function okay so basically it's a transformation of this function so you have basically an asymptote which is going to be at x equals 5 over 3 okay because 3x minus 5 can't be 0 so x can't be 5 over 3 okay x can't be 5 over 3 which is over here somewhere okay so it's going to be somewhere in this part here there's going to be an asymptote okay um, also this is negative 1 over it's in the form of negative because there's a minus in front of it so actually these two are going to be swapped over to the other side so I can get rid of this from this side whoops too big and from this side so it's actually going to look like in the opposite side it's going to have something like this it's going to look something like this okay x can't be 5 over 3 so it's going to be something like that and also there's an asymptote at one third so it's also going to be lifted up as well so it's actually going to be up here somewhere it's going to look something like that because have that that kind of look to it so we're going to make a bit more of a, a neater sketch but just to show you why i wanted to write it in this form because i can i can picture what it looks like and when we're finding the right range of a function it's always important to picture what it looks like so if i just um, make a pair of axes okay we have a few things an asymptote is going to be there at x equals one third y equals one third let's just draw that over here that's y equals one third that's one asymptote the other asymptote is when x equals five over three when x equals five over three that's one and two th one and two thirds so it's going to be somewhere over here x equals five over three will be another asymptote okay and it's going to be in on this side and that side of the equation so let's try and find for example where it hits the the x-axis okay it's going to hit the x-axis when y equals zero so the, it's going to hit the x-axis when x equals four okay and it's going to hit the y-axis 
when um, x equals zero, which is going to be four fifths, four fifths, which is up here somewhere. So it's gonna it's gonna go something like this, and something like this. Okay, it's gonna have this kind of look to it. Okay, but there's a condition that we had in this question, and that condition was an important condition, if you remember. That condition was that x has to be greater than 2. x had to be greater than 2. Okay, because remember uh, when we we worked out the value of k, t had to be positive. For t to be positive, we have to have x is greater than 2. So that means I've got to get rid of all of this side. That doesn't exist because x is greater than 2 is our domain. And we got to start from when x equals 2 x equals 2 is over here so there's going to be a value down here and anything below that value so I'll just put a little circle here x has to be greater than that value so anything below that is also cut out so our range now is is limited between this asymptote up here between this asymptote up here so our range we could say is limited between those two asymptotes let me just change the color so it looks a bit better so it's between this asymptote here and this value down here, which we got to find what the y value is down here. Okay, we got to find out what y is when x equals 2. Okay, so we need to find what this value is down here. Okay, we want to find what that value is here. That's not an asymptote, but I, I need to find what that value is. Okay, so when x equals 2, um, g of x is going to be equal to 2 minus 4. This is easier to use than that for calculating values over 3 times 2 minus 5. That's minus 2 over 1, which is negative 2. So the coordinates of this point are 2 minus 2. So this is, you know, the, the range of this function. It only exists between here and there. So it only exists between 1 third and minus 2. So the range of gx is its highest limit is a third it can't reach a third because that's an asymptote and it is above minus two it doesn't hit minus two because x has to be greater than two therefore y has to be greater than minus two so this is the range of our function okay so i took a bit longer than i would have in a real exam because i showed you lots of different ways but the best way to picture a function and draw its um, and find its range i mean is to be able to sketch it and a, a, a reciprocal function like this if you change it into the form of a over x plus a plus b something like this that's an easy way for you to sketch it by using transformations of the reciprocal function and that's exactly what we did here and we found the range of the function okay so i know it's it's worth not really worth that many marks it's only worth two marks okay but uh you know that's how you can find the range of this function there's other ways of finding the range of the function as well Okay, I mean, I, we could have done it in a slightly different way as well. Um, I just wanted to show you how it looks like, and so you can understand and get the feel for how to do such questions. But there is, uh, there are other ways. For example, I can work out almost immediately that the whole number part, when I divide these, is going to be a third, because this number divided by that number is going to be one third. So whatever the leading coefficient, if it's like an x and an x term, it's going to be that. So I know that y equals a third is going to be an asymptote and I know that x has to be greater than 2 so I can also uh, substitute that into here and I'm gonna get you know if I put x is greater than, uh, if I put x equals 2 I'll have y is equal to minus 2 so that I can you know kind of make an assumption that it's between minus 2 and a third so once you got used to it you could do it like that a lot quicker but I want you to understand why the range of a function is what we find when we picture what it looks like. The range is all the values of y that it can take. So I much prefer you to have an understanding of that rather than just to memorize certain techniques. Okay, so once you get to an exam and you understand it, well, now once you understand what we've done, you could do that. You could say, okay, I know that x equals y equals a third is one asymptote. And I also know that when I put x equals um, 2 in here, because 2 is the beginning of our domain, Okay, x has to be greater than 2 as you worked out. So if I put 2 in here, it will tell me the minimum value of our y. And then you can then work out the range that way. If you can picture what's going on, that's, that's fine. Okay, so I just wanted to show you a few different techniques there 
took a longer than it you know it would have in the exam just because I showed you that now we have um, um, finished this question number four so other questions from this paper you'll find in this playlist other questions from this topic of um, what's this topic again but it was actually parametric equations and also what came into here was functions as well this is like a lot of this is a lot of stuff from p3 actually functions so this is like a parametric equation I guess the main main thing so you'll find other questions on parametric equations in, in this playlist and you can subscribe to my channel from this link and I'll give you a link to another paper for p4 question um, paper on the top here thank you for watching and see you soon